Hello everyone, I'm Dan, and today I want to talk a little bit about a volumetric fog implementation that I've been experimenting with. So as many of you may know, for a very long time I've been looking for a solution for full proper volumetric fog in Roblox that works in interior spaces as well as regular spaces, which requires no prior setup by the user. So, specifically, I don't want to have to place volumetric fog meshes anywhere. I don't want to have to like draw out like where light rays should go or anything. It'd be quite nice if it just worked. So today I'm going to be sharing my findings on one such method that I've been experimenting with and which I'm not entirely sure if it's the right method, but it's interesting nonetheless and provides some very visually pleasing results. So I'm currently looking at my warehouse test level and we can walk around a bit here with the volumetrics on. And you can see some phenomena that you might not normally expect to see in a Roblox game. For example, that part there with a the light is actually casting light up into the atmosphere. And so it looks quite washed out over there. And if we walk a bit closer, you can see that a bit more clearly. That, that ceiling up there looks quite foggy and white because there's a white light here. Similarly, if we look behind us, this blue light on the wall here is casting blue light all around in the atmosphere. And it looks quite nice. I can actually go into third person here and I can jump my character around down there so you can see the washing out effect. Take a close look at my black shirt there and you should be able to see the effect much more dramatically. So that's pretty cool. Um, we can walk around a bit more and find some other lighting situations. So if we look up, you can see the ceiling's quite foggy. Uh, you might be able to see a little bit of banding. There is a sort of downside, which we will get to later around that. Uh, but you can see it's overall a really smooth effect and it's not terrible frame rate wise. I mean, it's not the most performant technique, but it does okay. And I'll talk about that in a second as well when I get into how this actually works. Uh, you can see there is a bit of light leaking here and that's again down to how this works um but you can see um we go outside oh it's so bright and let's just quickly go into the shade you can actually see there is a little bit of a gradient here as the skylight falls off which is quite nice and uh, you can especially see it on this side you can sort of see over there is brighter than down here in this dark dingy corner uh, it, it's an interesting effect it doesn't really work very well outdoors i find uh, so, going back in here, taking a look at this, let me now explain how exactly this is working. So, what I have is I have a, uh, I believe it's a 20 by 20 quad, like part, part quad, that is being C-framed to my head constantly every single frame. Inside that part quad is a particle emitter emitting particles forward out of the head. And it is emitting them in the range of that quad, so it's sort of like jittered by 20 by 20 studs or whatever. All of the particles are facing the camera, so they get the nice edge blending and stuff. And the reason why we jitter them is because we want the particles to physically be in different locations in world space. These particles have a light influence of one and a light emission of one, and they all have a soft glow texture. And what that means is that at those different positions in space, they're going to be picking up the color of the environment and they're going to turn it into a glow around their position. And because they're facing the camera, that means that the camera sees a glow around that position in the world of the color of the light at that position. So what I then do, I then do a little bit of trickery. So you're not actually seeing this world at regular exposure levels, right? Because like, you can imagine having lots of glows, we'd see lots of, you know, RGB fringing and color banding. So what I've done to remedy this, and this is a trick that I detailed on my Twitter a while back, is I've actually increased the exposure compensation or rather decrease the exposure compensation to negative four. So this world is actually massively underexposed. Uh, what you're actually seeing here, all these lights, they're all four, well, they're, they're two times brighter than four times because it's four stops uh, underexposed. So this sun is actually supposed to be blindingly white, like if you're at normal exposure levels. 
But because the exposure has been taken down so much and the lighting levels have been brought up so much, Roblox have far more color values to play with when it comes to representing gradients. So when it gets all smushed down for your display, you're not going to get big blocky bands of color. You're going to get more smooth gradients, which is how I managed to get all this lighting to look so smooth is because I'm giving Roblox the color space in order to process all of those smooth shades. And to be honest, I think more games should do this because it, get rid it gets rid of all sorts of color blocking issues around the engine. I'm kind of surprised Roblox don't automatically do it for you, to be honest, but that aside. Um, right, so the reason why I can keep my head still and the picture looks relatively stable is because after five seconds, I turn the time scale of the particle emitter down to zero, which essentially locks all of those particles in place. So we're sampling from fixed points in space at that point. And that means that it doesn't constantly look like everything's sort of blowing away from you. There's no flickering, particles aren't being created or destroyed. So it makes a much more consistent picture. So let's get into some of the dis disadvantages of this method. So first things first, as you've probably seen, it doesn't really work well with outdoor scenes. Like that's just completely blown out and it's no point in even trying to look over there. And the other thing, if we turn around here, you can see uh, the inside doesn't particularly fare well as well. So this is probably best used in like low contrast scenes, mainly indoor scenes. Um, the other thing as well, you'll notice is that when I enter this room, the room looks very bright that it's almost too bright. And when I leave this room, the room looks too dark, like, and the outside looks too bright. The reason why is because particles appear to behave in a sort of one-sided manner when it comes to receiving light. If a particle is facing towards the camera and this light is behind the camera, it seems to catch it more than the other way around where the light is like behind where the particles are so that the back of the particle is to the light. So that's a bit of a bummer. And obviously the other downside is that these are very smooth, low resolution uh, fog effects. So we're not gonna get any sharp shafts of light with this. And that's simply because we're not sampling enough points in space. Um, if you wanted to make this better, you'd probably have to sample way too many uh, points of light for it to be any kind of performant. It probably wouldn't even look that good, to be honest. You'd get like tons of color banding and everything. It's, generally, this doesn't really scale to higher resolutions. Uh, so do I think you should actually use this? My personal answer is no. I think that this is a mild curiosity at best. Uh, the reason why is pretty obvious, right? I mean, first things first, you should not abuse particle systems like this in general, like having full screen particles that cover your entire screen and have lots of layers of transparency. Generally not a good idea. I've actually limited myself to 50 particles in this setup. And so that's why the performance is all right. But that is 50 layers of overdraw, which... Uh, not the best, so I wouldn't recommend it. And of course, there are far cheaper ways to get volumetric light shafts in your game, namely the manual ways that I hate so much. <laughs> so I would recommend trying those instead because you're much more likely to get actually usable production ready results that look more in line with your artistic vision for what you want your volumetric fog to do. Um, the one upside of this method though, compared to all the other ones that I've seen, is that it is really, really soft. Like one of the things that you've never been able to do on Roblox is soft fog. Like if you have like meshes, like the best you can do is sort of make multi-layered meshes that sort of make it look like it has a soft edge. And that's what we did, for example, in Interval to do our volumetric lighting. We did uh, meshes that had multiple layers to blur the edges but mm, you can't really do like whole room gradients like this. Like this was simply impossible before. I think it'd be quite interesting to experiment with combining all of these different techniques to see what the end effect you could get is. 
and perhaps you could even use a much toned down version of this just for those big smooth like room wide gradients while you use the actual uh, hand placed meshes to get those sharp light shafts and get something looking really really nice. Uh, if there's interest in this, I might write a full blog post detailing all of the details. For now, I just wanted to show it off. Uh, anyway, I've been Dan, and I will see you guys next time. Have fun.